Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another video. I know it's been a while since my last one. I've just been waiting for life to settle down and to get caught up on orders, but I've just come to the conclusion that I'm never going to be caught up on anything. And so I just need to say screw it and make a video. So that's exactly what I'm doing. All right, the title of this video is how to get started with polymer clay. And basically before I get into it, I just wanna say that this is not going to encompass the entire universe of polymer clay by any means. It's just going to be a quick video for beginners to get you started. So hopefully you enjoy this and you take one or two things away from it. All right, now, before I get into the nitty gritty details here, I just want to explain really quick, I mean really quick, what polymer clay is. And it is essentially a synthetic clay that cures or hardens when it is exposed to heat. So basically it is a clay that does not dry or get hard until you put it in the oven. And I will get into the baking details and everything in a few. And I think it's really ironic that <laughs> you can see my switch plate over there and I literally don't have a switch plate on it. So if you know my work, you know I'm all about the switch plates and I don't even have one in my own studio. Anyway, all right, that's it. So that's basically what polymer clay is. And then once it's hard, it is pretty much plastic because polymer is plastic. So I saved you a trip to Wikipedia to read the really boring scientific article about it. All right, so first things first, when you're getting started with polymer clay, you are going to need polymer clay. And I am just gonna be talking about a few um, clays from Sculpey's different lines because that's all I really work with. And I'm not gonna talk about stuff that I haven't worked with because that's pointless. So yeah, we're gonna go to Sculpey.com here and see what they've got. All right, they literally have 20 different types of clay. And I am gonna be honest here, I did not know of over half of them. I do know that every clay is designed to be used for a specific set of projects. So depending on what your project is, that is gonna determine what kind of clay you use pretty much. So let's just go down the list here for a couple of them that I am familiar with. We have Original Sculpey. And just to give you some backstory, um, back when I got started with polymer clay, I had no idea what was out there. I had nobody to ask for help. I just thought that Original Sculpey was the only polymer clay that was out there. So everything that I made was made out of Original Sculpey. And I mean, I made a couple cool things, but I mean, they would have been a lot easier to make had I used a different kind. So Original Sculpey, um, even if you're getting started, I mean, unless you want to get some of it to kind of experiment and get comfortable, go ahead. I don't recommend it. It's, it's not the strongest when it's baked. It's pretty much just for like little kids in school to make little handprint sculptures. Then we have Sculpey 3, and if we hover over that on their website, it says, great for beginners, kids, and moms. Just moms, not dads. Dads can't use Sculpey 3. And I mean, if you're just getting started, Sculpey 3 can, can be good. I do know that there's a lot of people that do use it professionally and love it. Um, personally, I prefer a firmer clay, and as you can see here, it is extremely soft, even still in the packaging. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're shopping around. Then we have Primo Sculpey, which is the more higher end brand of clay that they offer. And as you can see here, um, straight out of the package, it is much firmer than that Sculpey 3 I was just playing with. Um, I mean, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer to condition it, but I mean, once you get it soft, it's, it's smooth sailing from there. On their website, it's described as a premium clay, the choice of clay enthusiasts. And I can definitely agree with that. I love Primo. It is extremely strong once you bake it. It even has a little bit of flex to it. I love using it for functional artwork, like stuff that's going to be touched over and over and over again, like my switch plates, if you're familiar with my work. All of them are made out of Primo. They resist wear and tear. I've had people come back three years later after buying a switch plate and just to tell me that this, this thing is on the highest traffic switch plate in my house and it still looks as good as the day I got it. So I'm really glad about that and I absolutely love Primo for that reason. Um, next we have Super Sculpey. And Super Sculpey is my pretty much go-to clay for everything besides the switch plates. Like anything that I sculpt, I pretty much sculpt it from Super Sculpey. And it's semi-translucent after you bake it, so it kind of gives this like cool effect. And it's really easy to blend with other colors and all that good stuff. So Super Sculpey, um, I love the way that it blends. I love the way that it feels. If you get a fresh brick of it from the store, 
if you get an old brick of this, it's gonna be a huge pain to try and condition it and knead it. So just have some patience. And then once you buy out the stock they have of it at your craft store, they'll hopefully replenish it with fresher clay that barely needs any kneading, kind of like what I did. But when I did that and bought out all their stock, um, they did replace it with fresher clay, but then they raised the price on me too. So don't do that. Always leave like one or two bricks there if you can. And then that's really, those are really all the clays that I'm gonna talk about because those are the ones that I have the most experience with. There's also, you know, Super Sculpey Firm and um, the Medium Blend Super Sculpey. If it were me and I was just getting started, I would get um, Super Sculpey or Primo, if you want colors. Next we have the Liquid Clays. And I'm just gonna talk about two of them here because these are the two that I use all the time and the two that I think you will find most beneficial. We have Bacon Bond, and then we have just translucent liquid clay. And the difference between these two is they're, they're actually pretty similar, but the, just the straight up liquid clay, this has a much thinner um, viscosity than the Bacon Bond. The Bacon Bond is thicker. They both kind of feel like Elmer's glue, but they bake um, with a nice translucent finish and they're great for reinforcing your sculptures or removing fingerprints, which I will talk about a little more later. Bacon Bond is also great where if you have like a piece of your sculpture that you don't want to blend together, it's great for reinforcing the bond between pieces of clay, if that makes sense. So, I mean, if you're making a sculpture and you just kind of want to put a piece on it like this, but you want it to maintain its original shape, like if you bake this in the oven, it's gonna break off really easily, but what you would do is you take some bacon bond and you'd put that on there and you would just, like you'd glue anything and you'd attach it like that. And then when it comes out of the oven, it will be super strong and it's not just gonna break off in two seconds. So that's what bacon bond is great for. Right? Next, we're going to get into bulking. Bulking out is very important because you can't just take a block of clay, sculpt something out of it and stick it in the oven because it's not going to bake all the way through and it's going to crack and it's going to be one horrible mess. You have to bulk it out. It actually says on the packages of clay that you should bulk out anything that is thicker than a half of an inch. The best thing to use for bulking is aluminum foil and what you do is you essentially just create the internal structure for your piece, if that makes sense. You're basically just going to rough out the shape of your sculpture and you're going to add the clay on top of that. So let's do a quick little demo here. And I mean, I'm not gonna get super creative with this or anything. So you have your, this is your internal structure for your sculpture. And then you were just going to add a layer of clay over the aluminum foil like that. So instead of just taking a piece of clay that's that big, you're going to make the shape of it out of aluminum foil. You're gonna add the clay over that, like so. And that's really bright. Come on, camera, see it. Another thing that goes hand in hand with bulking is armature wire. And I have some aluminum jewelry wire here. It's just colored to look like copper. It's not really copper. It comes in gold, black, doesn't matter because you're not going to see it anyway. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to work with your aluminum foil to create the skeleton of your sculpture. You're going to want this for thin areas or limbs on a figurine or something like that um, to support the clay that you are sculpting. Another thing with armature, if you do any part of your sculpture correctly, make sure it is your underlying structure because that is going to support your clay it's going to prevent it from falling over the oven and pieces breaking off just make sure you're patient and you take the time to create a strong solid structure beneath your clay next we have sculpting tools that you're going to need i use um, wax carving tools if you're going to purchase a set of wax carving tools you're going to want to make sure that you have a spoon tool which looks like that and this is kind of what you can do with it Then you're going to want this knife shaped tool. This is great for cutting. You're gonna want this one here. That's good for a variety of different things. I love it for smaller details or um, drawing lines on rounded areas. You're gonna want this one, which they carry at pretty much every craft store. Um, it's a pin tool, I don't know, or whatever it's called. This one's great as well for, again, drawing lines, poking holes. Next, we have some ball styluses here. 
and they can create like kind of pounded metal texture, they can poke holes, they can smooth surfaces. Then next we have some color shapers and these are kind of like the different effects that they can do, whether you want subtle lines or harsh ones. These are great for that. And then when shopping for color shapers, I would recommend getting some that are on the firmer side rather than the softer side because the softer they are, the less impact they are going to have um, when they touch the clay and the harder they are, the more impact. Next, you're gonna need any type of craft knife with a non-serrated blade. It basically means that it's not sharpened to cut things. It's just a flat piece of metal like that. So I would definitely recommend I use a palette knife. I love the way that this works. Tons of flexibility with it, as opposed to like an X-Acto knife. I mean, you can use an X-Acto knife, just make sure that you protect your surface before you use it, because obviously you're gonna cut your surface. Next we have our pasta maker. And this one, this is mine. It's been with me since like day one. It's, it's been through a lot. Poor little guy. But um, this is great for um, conditioning clay. I mean, I know they say don't put unconditioned clay in it, but I swear to God, I put the clay in straight out of the box sometimes and this thing has still held up. So I mean, I ain't worried about it. If you don't want to get invest in one of these right off the bat, which you don't have to, you can always just get a rolling pin. So back to the pasta maker. Um, you just set the thickness that you want the clay to be at when you push it through. Stick your clay in, crank the lever, and you get this perfectly flat, perfectly even, amazing piece of clay that's ready to put right over your aluminum foil. All right, next I'm gonna talk about how to remove fingerprints. Now, I mean, you really don't have to worry about this when you're just getting started because you're still learning so much and you're you know, getting comfortable with everything. But if you don't want fingerprints on your piece for future reference, I like to use clay softener or good old cornstarch. I know this sounds really weird, but I'll talk about the cornstarch first. And basically what you do with the cornstarch is I'll take a little bit of it on the tip of my finger and I will just brush it onto the surface of the clay. And what that does is there's very, very, there's a very fine grit to it that when it meets the clay, it smooths out the surface really nice. Now, another great use for cornstarch is when you're kneading your clay, you can add some of it to the clay and then knead it all together. And it'll take some of the tackiness away from the clay if it's extremely soft. And you can even coat your workspace in cornstarch and then you know sculpt over that and none of your clay will stick to the surface. One thing to keep in mind with this though is I don't recommend using cornstarch like that with colored clay just simply because um, it, you're not going to get it off and it's going to dilute your colors a little bit. So I would just stick with it using it that way if you plan on painting your sculpture when it's done curing. And next we have for fingerprint removal the clay softener and this is just essentially baby oil. Basically, you just add it to the surface of the clay and brush it on with paintbrush over and over and over again until you can see the fingerprints going away. And then another method of removing fingerprints that I absolutely love is using clay softener hand in hand with bacon bond or um, liquid clay. And basically what I do is I'll just add the liquid clay or bacon bond to the piece and then add a little bit of clay softener and then brush it all together. And what this is gonna do is it's really going to smooth out your surface and it's also going to reinforce it because you're adding that extra layer of protection with the liquid clay or bacon bond in combination with the clay softener. And that's a really neat trick that I like. I use that for pretty much every sculpture that I make that I wanna remove fingerprints on. And then of course the last step is baking the sculpture once you're done. and. Most, most polymer clays will say 15 minutes at 275. That's pretty much what I bake everything at, but it does depend on the different types of clay. I know Primo, um, it recommends you bake it for 20 minutes, whereas Super Sculpey and Sculpey 3, it says um, 15 minutes. So I usually do anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes for anything, and I don't have any problems with burns or anything like that. Just make sure that you follow the instructions on the box of clay. Baking at a higher temperature is not going to cure it faster, it is going to burn it. So be patient and wait the whole 15 minutes. So basically, um, that's pretty much polymer clay in a nutshell. Oh, oh, lastly, you're gonna need a calendar. 
to schedule your life out because once you start sculpting, you're not gonna wanna stop. All right, and that's a wrap, everyone. I hope you found this video informative, and if you're getting started with polymer clay or you were thinking about it, I hope this makes you wanna go to the store, grab some clay, and knock yourself out. Be sure to subscribe, I promise. I'm gonna try my absolute hardest to post more frequently on here. And then follow me on Instagram at Facebook at Ace of Clay to see what I'm up to on a daily basis. I also got t-shirts coming Friday, so that's gonna be really cool. I got the first design coming out. Check out my Instagram to see that, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.